If you are looking for procedural terrain tools, have a seat because today we are going to take a look at Gaia. This is a production ready terrain and landscape generator that is used by the film and game industry. Gaia packs geological shapes, sophisticated erosion, snow and river simulation tools, and one of the most comprehensive texture generation systems in a simple yet intuitive node system workflow that can be used by anyone with just 10 minutes of a tutorial, like I'm going to show. Gaia also has a paid version, but in this version, we are gonna just look at the free version. The only limitation is that you can only export 1K texture resolution. So go to the link in the description and download yourself a copy of this amazing software so that we can dive in and start making all sorts of terrains. When you first open up Gaia, this is how your interface will look. You have different templates to start from, and each template has a set of presets you can use. I like starting with the texturing template because it has all the texture nodes set up for me, which can sometimes be tricky to do. Open that. Now you can see we have a 3D viewport, a node editor, a tools section, and some settings on the right side. You can get rid of the 2D view by clicking the 2D icon. You can zoom in and out using Alt, to preview a node, just select it. You will also see the settings for that node in the side panel. As you can see, we have a Perlin noise combined with a range node, then it's taken through a wizard. This node can be used to simulate erosion of, of your rocks, mountains, and everything. From there, we have the texturing nodes. These use different functions to texture the mesh by a lot of factors, including height, erosion, type, and more. If you start from a blank canvas, none of these nodes will be set up for you. But as you can see, it's nothing complicated and you can search for any node directly in the node editor to recreate the setup. You also have some settings in the top bar for texture resolution. If your viewport is laggy, you can drop the resolution to about 0.5K or 2K for more detail. You can also adjust your polygon count for the mesh up there as well. Let's select everything before the wizard node and delete them so that we can set up our own scene. In the tools box panel, you can see all the available nodes. You can collapse it too to make more room or collapse the categories. Let's bring in a canyon node and look at that beauty. There are hundreds of nodes we can mix this with, so let's try some dunes. To blend these, drag in a combine node. You can also drop in a curves adjustment to the dunes to make them sharper. Now, Connect these to the texture, slope, and FX nodes to complete our setup. Let's select a different gradient that fits the terrain we are creating from the sat map setting. I like the textures in the valley, but not on the surface. Don't forget to check out the high resolution version of your textures by switching to 2K or above if your computer can handle it. Gaia will rebuild the textures in high resolution, and this can take some time to process. You can check the progress at the bottom. I want the flatbed to have different textures, so duplicate the sat maps node, connect the combine, and find a suitable gradient for the flat area. I want this area to have more green, so I will choose among the green gradients. You can edit these gradients and even reverse them. Right now, all the sat maps are being applied to the entire mesh. Let's fix that by first combining them with a combine node and separating them using a mask, specifically a height mask. As we know, the valley area is below the flat bed. There are other types of masks you can try, that, but for this case, this is going to be enough. The height has to be connected from the combine to get its height information, and you can preview what it's doing by selecting it. Adjust the settings on the right and connect it into the combine mask input. You can swap the inputs if you want to get a specific look. You can do this in the node editor or in the settings of the combine node on the right. Try out different gradients to get different looks. You can swap the canyon for a mountain node and all the nodes will still work perfectly. This makes it easy to create different terrains without much hassle. Below each node's settings, you have some falloff filters that you can use to adjust how the node is mixed into your scene. Let's combine the canyon with the mountain to see what happens. Just click the sat maps nodes to see how the textures are applied, or click the last node in the setup. 
One thing we haven't added is erosion. So grab a wizard node and add it before the texture nodes, and that will add erosion to the mesh. Now it's time to export. To export the mesh, let's add a mesher node and connect it to one of the combined nodes. If it gives you an error, that's because you are connecting the wrong data. Try a different combined node. The mesher node also gives you the final vertex count settings, file format, scale, and LOD options. For the textures, right-click the nodes you want to export and use the Mark for Export option to export out a map for the selected node. You can give this a name like Diffuse. I will also export the different sat maps and the height mask for them. You can also add a normal map and a details node for the bump map. Mark these for export and you are ready to export. You can click Build to start the export process. After it's complete, you will get an OBJ file that can be used in different applications like Blender. And that's it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.